everybody, and thank you for joining me here. This is the A Historian's Podcast, and I'm back, and this is actually going to be a full-length episode, so sit tight, get something to drink, something to eat, because it's going to be a lengthy one. I have a lot of stuff to talk about today. It's been a while since I've done a whole entire podcast. Last time I just did a kind of a little mini podcast uh, right before I went on my trip to Alaska, Vancouver. We took, um, I'll talk more about this at the end, but basically we took a, um, a land tour. We flew into uh, Anchorage, Alaska, took a land tour up to Denali National Park. Then we actually got on a boat on a cruise ship and we went um, to several different ports um, in Alaska and then ended up in Vancouver and we spent a couple days in Vancouver, like a day in Vancouver. So that was our trip. It was two weeks long and it was a lot of moving our luggage back and forth and it was a lot of traveling. I'm happy to be home. We got home Sunday, so here we are. <laughs> so I have all of this stuff to cram into one little episode. I'm trying not to make it too long either. So where can we start? Um, first, we'll start with the knit-alongs, um, and then I'll talk about this. That's like 80 degrees here today in, the, <laughs> in Colorado. I was going to say in the United States, but that's not true. In Colorado, specifically where I live, um, between Denver and Boulder, it is about 80 degrees. But sidetrack. <laughs> I just noticed because it's, it's very warm. Okay, so we have two knit-alongs going on right now. Um, we have um, a year-long knit-along that I'm hosting with um, Deborah, who is the podcaster behind um, Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal. I'm a little out of practice here. <laughs> um, we're having a knit-along that goes all the way through the end of the year. It is I Like Big Shawls and I Cannot Lie, and it's basically knitting a big shawl that is over 1,200 yards. So that's all it is. And you could contribute um, to the knit along by either um, posting into the chatter threads, which we both have it on both of our Ravelry groups, or the finished object threads, which again, you could double dip in both of our Ravelry groups as well. And I will be pulling some prizes at the end of June. So you have a couple of weeks, yeah, you have one more week um, to be able to get some chatter in there. So I'll be pulling out some prizes at the end of the month for the chatter thread. And then I have one um, that I'm hosting. It's called the Cal Cal. It is, um, and it's open to crochet as well. The, um, I like big shawls and I cannot lie, it's only knitting. But the one that I'm hosting in my Ravelry group, the Cal Cal, is only knitted, uh, or is knitting and crochet. Jeez, have to get back into it. And that is, I extended it until the end of June, so get in your finished objects into that thread. I think we have about 20 finished objects, which is amazing. Um, so I'm guessing you guys like cows as much as I do. <laughs> um, although I've only gotten one done so far, and I'll just kind of show you that in a minute. So um, be sure to get your entries into, I do have a chatter thread and a finished object thread as well. So just be sure to get those in before the end of the month. And I'll be pulling them on the, the next podcast, which will be the beginning of... July. Yeah, it'll be the beginning of July, which I'll, which will be the next time I podcast. But yeah, so those are the two knit alongs and just be sure to participate and you could actually win some prizes. Um, that's it for that. I do want to talk about um, some of the finished objects that I have as well as some of the stuff that I took with me on the trip. So let me... I'm trying to figure out where to go from here. Let me go with the stuff that I took with me on the trip. So last time I showed you some things that I was taking on the trip with me. Um, the poncho was one of them that I finished and I showed you that. That was already finished so I already showed you that last time but I actually didn't use it as much as I thought I would because it was as colder than I thought it was going to be. We were planning on 60s Fahrenheit. Uh, it ended up being more like high 40s, 50s. So it was colder than a poncho, unfortunately. So I, I got to wear it a couple of nights, but not as much use as I thought I was going to get out of it. I actually used this more. This is my Adventurous Shaw by Amba O'Brien. And I did have a little bit of a snafu with this. I'm going to have to... It already has to be fixed. <laughs> so I did notice, apparently at some point, I had dropped a stitch. So I started unraveling. So I'm going to have to try to figure out how to fix that. I'm just going to have to sew it in, I guess. But, um, yeah. So I, I dropped a stitch, apparently, at some point in the process that I was making this. And another part of the this problem, which is, by the way, it was a great shawl to be wearing around town. 
um, it's a fingering weight shawl, so it was really nice to just put around and go. But now I can't find it. But another issue I was having with this one, and it wasn't the problem of this pattern or this yarn or anything, it's just that I had a rain jacket and my rain jacket had Velcro on it and the shawl kept snagging on the rain jacket. So I was kind of a little bit bummed about that. So another reason why I think that cows are better for me, because the cow would not have gotten, see now I can't find it, but there were certain parts that were snagged because of that on the Velcro, which I was really bummed about. But yeah, so this ended up being a good piece to take with me. I think next time um, I go up somewhere that's rainy or that's going to be a little chilly like that, I might just take a cow instead of a shawl. It might just be easier to transport as well as it won't get snagged on anything. So that was kind of a bummer. So it just made me realize um, what's easier. Here's a, here's a piece that's snagged, but just like there's some pieces that were snagged. So this ended up being a good... Overall, a good project to take with me, or a good finished object to take with me. I'm going to have to probably fix it and block it again, because it's been through a lot, and then put it away for the season. And then the other project I took with me, not project, I keep saying project, the other item I took with me on the trip was this, my hat. And um, so last time you saw this, I was just finishing up the decreases. And this is the Legacy Fiber Arts in the... Um, it's Showtime. It's a mini set they had at Needles Up back in Rhinebeck in the fall. And yeah, I just did a little bit of a fade here from the colors. This is the Sock Head Slouch Hat by Kelly McClure. And this actually fits really well. Um, I actually rolled up the, the brim like this and wore it like this. But it fit my head. And, well, my head's pretty small. It's just the hair that's the problem. <laughs> so it fit everything. It was easy. It was a fingering weight, so it was just easy to put on my head and go. And I did wear this a couple of times on the trip, even though I'm not a big hat person. So I would recommend. This is very, um, my daughter wanted to steal it from me. So I think I might have to make her one, maybe for Christmas. I don't know. I gotta stop <laughs> trying to knit people things for Christmas, because it's just, it gets too much. But I have plenty of single skeins that I could use for this kind of hat for her in the future very very far in the future <laughs> okay so I got those are the ones that I took with me on the trip so that was one finished object that I just showed you the hat I guess I'll show you this one that I'm wearing this is very warm and it is the um, it's already I've already blocked it it is the every which way shawl by Barbara Benson and here it is in all its glory I started this around Halloween in the fall and I finally got it done. So I'm very happy with this. I can't wait to wear this in the fall. It's very, obviously it's very fall. <laughs> and there's like a million and one, sorry, I got hair. There's like a million and one mistakes in here, but you can't tell, <laughs> cannot tell at all. Um, and that is an airplane. So I apologize if that's really loud to have my windows open. So yeah, there are a million and one mistakes after I got basically a third into the project. <laughs> I stopped following the pattern and I just kind of went with it and I was not going to pull up back mistakes and you are not able to tell so it's okay and basically this is how I would wear it like I wear most of my shawls Oop, there we go like a kerchief uh, and this yarn is once upon a corgi in the zombie kangaroo colorway and it is in her Marie Cutie base, which is 75% Superwash Corydale and 25% Nylon. This is my first time working with Corydale and I loved it. It's so soft and not, not itchy at all. I really enjoyed working with it. Um, there's not a whole lot of yarns that have Corydale in them. I don't know why, but um, probably want to do a little more research on Corydale and see what's, what's going on with that breed. Because it's not one that I come across very often. But I really love this. And you can see the variegated yarn. I think it, the pattern is actually meant for variegated yarn. So, yeah. I'm really happy with this project. It's just really warm and I need to take it off. Okay. So, trying to think. All right. So, I got this done on the trip. So, it's one of the finished objects I got done on the trip. Now, I can put it away for the fall. It's off my needles. 
And last time we spoke, I mentioned that I was changing out my Make 9. When I put together my list of Make 9, I thought it was just going to be a great idea to put, I think it was, I should have looked beforehand, but I think it was five objects were sweaters. Why did I think I was going to get that many sweaters done in one year? I don't know. <laughs> but... I, I told myself, you know, when I made my Make 9, I'm like, well, you know, at, at around the half year point, around June 1st, I'll reevaluate and take things out and substitute things that I don't think I'm going to be able to get done. And yeah, I was not going to get two more sweaters done by the end of the year. It just not was not going to happen. And for next year, if I do the Make 9, I'm definitely going to do um, three sweaters, three shawls or like neck accessories, and then three socks. I think that's what that's much more manageable to have three big items and then six smaller items that you could actually get done in a year. So I think that's what my plan is going into next year's Make 9, which is much more reasonable than this year's <laughs> Make 9. So I'll show you my new Make 9 on the screen now. And basically what I did was replace two of the sweaters that I haven't even cast on yet, two of the sweaters uh, for cowls instead. And I am doing the Patiki cow, and then I put in the Rainbow Warrior cow, which was a gift from my friend Deborah. So I was looking to see if maybe I could take one of those on the trip with me, and I thought maybe the Patiki cow was going to be too much concentration because it is color work. Um, it doesn't look like it's difficult color work. It just looks like it, you have to basically be sitting down for a while to be able to get the color work pattern in. And I just wanted something that you could just pick up and go. So I picked the Rainbow Warrior cow. And I went through my stash, which is over there, that's why I'm looking over there. And I picked out two different yarns that have been sitting in stash for a while. I picked out the Lolo Did It. This is in her Naked Hippo. And I picked out the Misty Alpaca. This has been sitting in my stash for several years, so I just wanted to get that worked on because I've been eyeing it and I haven't been able to find the right project to work with this yarn and I finally did so just kind of went with it. So here are the two yarns and I have a bunch of it left. Um, I think I calculated that I have about 60 grams of each which I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. I'm not going to make another one. I'm not the kind of person that does multiple. I don't know. Maybe I'll make, I don't know. Maybe I'll make a sock head cow, a sock head. I don't know. I think about this. But I have a lot left. And I just wanted to kind of show you something interesting. So um, I kind of, there's some people that always pull from the inside and there's people that always pull from the outside when they're knitting with the yarn. And I kind of do both. But I think I'm going to go back to just pulling from the outside because look how much neater this is. This was pulling from the inside and then this was pulling from the outside. So you can tell the difference. Yeah, I much rather like it to end up like this than like this because now I have to rewind this again to make it neater. This is gonna drive me crazy, honestly. So um, I have a lot of yarn left. And this is my my finished object. Let me see the bottom. Yeah. So it was mosaic knitting. It's very easy. Um, you, I think that has the pattern has the option to knit it flat or knit it in the round and I have blocked it I just have to trim the, the ends. They've already been woven in, but I don't even want to <laughs> wear this right now No, I'm not gonna wear it. <laughs> it's too hot But it, I wore it some of the trip and I do have pictures of me wearing it um, So you can see that on the Instagrams And there is a plane flying by we have an airport pretty close by so I apologize if you hear those noises. Um, so yeah, I really like how this came out and I'm glad that I actually found a project for this crazy colorful yarn. This is the back so you can see there is a little bit of a seam here which does not bother me because it's it's gonna be in the back, who cares. But if that bothers you that might not be the, you might want to find another way to deal with the seam or maybe not, this, is, this isn't the project for you. But that doesn't bother me at all. And yeah, so this is my contribution to the cow cow. <laughs> All right, so we could put that away for next year. And that is it for my finished objects. I keep getting fuzz all over my lipstick, lip gloss. 
Um, so yeah, that is it for finished objects. In terms of works in progress, <laughs> you can see they're right up there. I did a little video on this um, showing you all of my socks and how much progress I got done on all of my socks. I did not get any pairs of socks done because just didn't happen. <laughs> I did cast on a few new socks, so I will put in a little video here um, talking about those socks. So I figured it might be the easiest thing just to kind of show you all of the socks that I worked on during vacation, all of the socks that I took with me, I should say. I, there's one particular one that I didn't work on at all. So here they all are in one screen capture. So we'll start over here. These are the ones I didn't get any work done at all. These right here are Shoppel and I didn't even get past the cuff. That's where they were when I left here. <laughs> so no work on those. These I got a lot of work done actually on. Um, these are my Dunkin' Donuts socks. This is Artistic Yarns by Abby. And she is a dyer based out of Colorado Springs, I believe. And I did get all of this work done, specifically this from here to here on the plane rides back home. I am doing the blueberry waffle um, pattern, which is a free pattern on Ravelry on the front and then just doing a plain stockinette on the back. And I'm just gonna do a afterthought heel. And so basically I'm just knitting a big tube and then doing an afterthought heel. I am basically got the idea from my friend Belle. Um, she was doing this on a self-striping sock, so I figured that I would do the same thing to make it a little bit more interesting. And this little charm is by Super Sucre Miniature. It's a little iced coffee. So yeah, so there's that sock. Then this one, um, this was already the this was already done before I left, so obviously I didn't do this on the trip. But um, just kind of showing you that I'm almost done with this pair of socks. This is for my daughter, Amelia, and I ran out of yarn. Um, I basically had half a skein left. I made her a, socks with, a pair of socks with this earlier, I think last year. And so I decided to make her another pair because she grew out of that pair of socks. And I just decided to use the rest of this and then add a contrast um, toe. And heel so I'm, right now I'm at the point where I'm going to start doing the blue for the toe and then cut in for the heel so I'm almost done with this pair this is probably gonna be for Christmas so no hurry in that then I decided to cast on a pair of socks for my husband um, I did get two skeins of this from Holly Press Fibers um, this is the A Historian Takes a Hike colorway which uh, I gave her a picture and she made this into a colorway which I thought was really amazing so this is it and I love the way that it's turning out this is actually on 72 stitches so it's bigger and it's going to be a big giant tube and then I'll put a heel in afterwards so that's going to be a long process <laughs> to get those done. Um, I think originally I thought this was going to be a Father's Day gift. Um, obviously not happening. Maybe not even for Christmas. This is going to take a while. His socks take forever to make because they're so big. And then my last one is a another shopple and this was a 50 gram ball that I had and I just split it in half and I'm going to make Halloween socks out of this. Um, so I got this far and then I was kind of done. I don't really like this yarn. It's very dense and very thick. Um, it's supposed to be a fingering weight and I did check the gauge because it looked kind of bigger than my normal socks and I was like, hmm, that's kind of weird. That looks really big. What's going on there? Because you can see comparatively, I mean, it's still a little smaller, but it does look bigger than my usual size socks. So I actually did check the gauge and it was right where it needed to be. So... I don't really like this fabric. It's very thick and it's not very squishy at all. So we'll see how long that takes me to make this pair of socks because <laughs> I'm not enjoying the knits. Um, but yeah, so my plan is just to knit this whole little ball up. I'll have another little ball for the other sock and then put in uh, contrast heels and toes on that. So yeah, so those are the socks that I took with me on vacation. So. Um, let's get into the other projects. Okay, so now we're back. Um, I'm going to show you my last work in progress that I worked on the, the trip. And this is living in my uh, Me Made bag, my first project bag, bag that I ever made. And this is my lace market. Now, I, before I left for the trip, I told you that I wanted to get this done before I go to Cincinnati. And that is... Um, end of June. So I have um, about a month <laughs> to get this done. So I will show you how much progress I've made. So it was basically from that little taco 
down to the bottom is how much progress I got made on hmm, this trip. So basically there, a couple of inches. So I have this much. I guess I'm going to have to try it on and see how, how much further I need. Let's see if I can stand up for a minute. So... Actually, I think I'm probably getting a close to where I need to start doing the bottom detail and then pick up the sleeves and the collar. Um, and it's short sleeves, so it shouldn't be that much time. But um, this is 100% linen. This is Quince & Co. in their Sparrow base, I believe it is. It's their 100% linen fingering weight. And this is the Lace Market by Marie Green. And here's the back. And this has been on my needle since last... July? Last June? July? Might have been even before that, actually, because <laughs> I think I wanted to get this stuff for my birthday last year. So, there's that. Um, I need to wind a new ball of my linen yarn, so I can pick that up, and I'm already noticing that I'm probably going to hate weaving these ends in, <sighs> because I'm not a fan of linen, <laughs> and I feel like you could see, well, here, had an issue happen here. I don't know if you could tell that little section where it's a little tighter. Um, so I, I started weaving in some of the ends just so I don't have everything left at the end to, to weave in. So I started weaving in some of the ends, although I didn't like the way I wove this one in. So I was trying to pull it out and then I yanked it too hard. So I'm hoping this kind of loosens up a little bit, that line right there. And then let me show you one place where I wove it in. I still don't really like it, but it's gonna have to do. See right here. I don't know if you can see that. But yeah. I'm not a fan of the linen. So yeah. So hopefully I'll get this done before I go to Cincinnati next month. <laughs> that is the plan anyway. Yeah, so I'll have to try this on later and see where it is on where it fits on my body and then I'll kind of go from there. So that is it for my works in progress. Um, I did make some purchases and I was also gifted some stuff as well. So I'm going to talk about some of the gifts that I received. And this was before I left my trip. My friend Belle, um, she has this lady in her life that gives her a bunch of yarn. <laughs> Apparently she doesn't knit with it or she gets tired with it and then she just brings garbage bags of yarn over to Belle's house and just says here have it I don't want it anymore and then Belle's like I don't know what to do with all of this yarn so then she gives it out to her friends as well so I got a couple of um this is I have much more than than this to show you but I don't want to be here all day showing you things so I'm just going to show you a couple of things that she gave me she's so generous for sharing these things so I got a couple of Lorna's laces and this is in the color Ambition, and this is in the color and Caramel Pumpkin Latte. And I know it's blowing it out right now. And then I got some self-striping socks, sock yarn. And I did look, every time I get self-striping socks, I always like to see what they look like when they're knit up. So I did look up this, and it looked like ice cream, so I'm excited to get that done. Even though I don't like ice cream. Little known fact, right? My family loves ice cream. I'm not a big ice cream person at all. So, I know. <laughs> and then I got this as well. This is Kramer in the Sterling Silk and Silver. So it has silver, like a Stellina, um, nylon, silk, and superwash merino. So that's fun too. And this is fingering weight. These are all fingering weight. But there's so much more that she gave me that I'm not going to show today. But I'll show you when it gets knit up. And then um, I did a swap with Erin, who is the podcaster behind the She Must Knit podcast. And um, I had shown, gosh, I think this was back in the fall, that my friend uh, Mel had sent me a, a package that wasn't intended for me. It was intended for somebody else, but she, she basically switched the packages. And she ended up sending me some fiber, which I don't spin. <laughs> so I kind of mentioned it on the podcast, and Erin said, I'll spin that for you. So we had kind of a little bit of a swap. So I'll kind of show you what those little row lags ended up looking like. I'll take them out. But she spun them for me. They were like little row lags that my friend Mel put together. 
So now I have them in yarn form and I can actually do something with them. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about these. These are probably, I was thinking about this yesterday, I'm thinking these will probably be a um, part of a mitten, or not mittens, I don't wear mittens, but like a fingerless mitts. So I thought that I could do that. And then she also sent some of her own hand spun as well that could coordinate with these. So I could use these up and then whatever I need left to make the mitt <laughs> that I could just use with this blue. So I thought that was really nice. Thank you so much, Erin, for doing this. And thank you to Mel who accidentally sent these in my way. That way I, made, I actually made a new friend through this process. So <laughs> it was a really fun experience. So thank you so much. Okay, so I got those. And then she sent me some extra, some additional hand spun, which I thought was amazing. These colors are amazing. She also sent me a lot of sweets and treats and we've been eating those. So much, so much more to share. Um, but I'm not gonna, again, I'm not gonna share all of that with you today. Let's see. Okay, first of all, look at this thing. Oh my God, is that not beautiful? I'm guessing this is bulky weight, maybe? You could correct me on that, Erin, if, if it's not, but it looks like either a chunky or bulky weight. But the colors on this are beautiful. I mean, there's mm, just my color. I'm so excited. This is just like a little baby, <laughs> little yarn baby. So beautiful. Thank you. And then um, she also sent me this. Oh, so pretty. Look at the halo on that. Oh, it has alpaca. That's why. The halo. And then she also made me these little... Progress Keepers. Oh, this is her shop, by the way. She does sell project bags and yarn. Oh, there we go. So thank you so much, Erin. These were, these were so great. Oh my God. Everything was just wonderful. She sent me such a wonderful package and my whole family has been eating all of the treats that she sent. So I'm really excited to try all of those Canadian treats out. Okay. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about this trip. So if you're not interested in that, I'm also going to be showing some acquisitions that I got from the trip. Um, so if you're not interested in that, um, thank you for joining. And I will see you next time. If you are interested in um, learning more about my trip, as well as um, seeing some footage that I took that I'll put at the end as well, you can stay tuned for that. Um, but before that, let me actually bring Amelia in. She wanted to share something with you today. So give me just one second and we'll... We'll have her talk about her latest endeavor, I, I should say, into the, the art world that she has not, um, yeah, she hasn't done this before, so she, I just wanted her to share this with you. Give me just one second. Hi. <laughs> so I'm making shoes, like coloring them, and the theme is kind of flowers. Let me hold your shoe. And I did add a dog because why not? And what are you using to draw this stuff? Fabric markers. Yeah, and we actually had to go to two different stores to find canvas, white canvas Because we went to Ma Michael's to get the paint marker things, and then we had to go to Walmart because they didn't have shoes. Yep. Apparently, Michael's only gets their canvas shoes in the springtime, which I thought was weird. So we had to actually go to Walmart to get the canvas shoes, but we bought the fabric paints at, over at Michael's. Yeah. So this is her first shoe. She hasn't started on the second one yet. Or did you? I started on it. Okay. So hopefully she'll be able to get these done and when she has them finished, we'll have to take some pictures of them. Yeah, it's a plan I had when I was almost done with school, but now I am done, so I can do it. Yep. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I'm back. And I'm going to show you some of the acquisitions that I bought in Alaska and Canada. So let's see. We'll start. All right. We'll start with the very first one. And that this is the first shop I went to in Anchorage, Alaska. Oh, here we go. I should have probably had this a little bit better prepared before I started podcasting. Okay. So the first place I went to was the Woolly Mammoth. And they are in um, Anchorage, Alaska. It's not a very big town. 
so it's pretty walkable. And if you notice here, they're only open May through September because nobody goes to Anchorage the rest of the year. So they're only open those four months. So if you're going to Alaska during those four months, then you could go and stop by their store. I think they also have online presence as well. Um, it was a cute little shop. Um, I believe all of their... I believe all of their um, product was Alaskan dyed, if I remember correctly. I don't think they had any commercial yarn whatsoever. I think it was all either locally or at least Alaskan dyed. Um, and the... The person that owns the shop also dyes um, yarn, so they still at the store. Um, so you can tell here the woolly mammoth, and it's uni uniquely Alaskan. So I did buy a couple of things there. I bought these cute little stitch markers. Let me see them. They have um, locally made in Alaska. They have little, here we go, little animals. That's the state of Alaska. Some moose and some dragonflies and kinds of little Australian, oh, Australian, wow, Alaskan, Alaskan um, themed little stitch markers. Oh, here's a little bear. Yeah. So we went there first and I ended up buying two different kinds of yarn. This is actually Northern Bee Studio. So this is dyed in small batches in Anchorage, Alaska, and this is the uh, their sturdy sock, 80% to wash merino, 20% nylon, and it's called Retro Kitchen. Because you know I had to get that Retro Kitchen. So this is probably going to be some socks. And I'm really excited to see what this knits up to, to look like. Um, but it goes from red to blue. And it's Retro Kitchen. Because I needed that in my life. And the other thing I bought, um, it's this little tiny <laughs> skein of yarn. Um, for those of you who might not be familiar, um, so, and I don't know a whole lot of the history, um, I know my friend Mel knows a whole lot about this, but I don't know a whole lot about it, but the Kiviet, um, which is, um, yarn that comes from the musk ox, and apparently they're only reside in certain parts of the world and they're not very common so therefore whenever they make their hair into yarn their fur into yarn it's rather pricey so they actually had this glass case and i'll insert some pictures of what an, a musk ox looks like um but yeah they're super cute little furry ox <laughs> And um, they do have them, that's like kind of what Alaska is known for in terms of the yarn industry, the Kiviet. So when I walked into this yarn store, they had this huge glass case, and it was locked. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that, that must be where the Kiviet is. And in fact, yes, it is where the Kiviet is. Because if you buy one skein of 100% Kiviets, just Kiviets, no sheep, you know, sheep's wool or anything in there, just 100%, at this particular store, it was $220 for one skein. Yeah, <laughs> so I ended up buying, <laughs> I believe this is 70, no, uh, what is this? This is 28 grams, uh, and it's 50% kiviet and 50% merino wool. So this is uh, probably enough for maybe a set of fingerless mitts, I'm hoping, but it's very, very soft, um, and this is kiviet and wool. So it has both in it because I couldn't afford $200 of skein for the 100% stuff. But I got a little piece of Alaska with me to take home. So at least there's that for in terms of souvenir yarn. I could I would use it for something along the line. And of course, this is my color. So um, this will sit on my shelf for a little bit of time until I figure out the right project to use this for. Um, but yes, I want to learn more about Kiviet. Um, I, believe, I don't believe it's endangered anymore. I could be mistaken on that. But it's a very um, kind of elusive fiber. Um, and it's, as you can see, very expensive. So I, I was kind of excited to get that home with me. Although, yeah. And it's supposed to be, Kiviet apparently is supposed to be 80% warmer than wool. Like sheep's wool. Which is crazy to think about. Um, so I have that. And then we went to, where do we go next? Um, Ketchikan. Ketchikan in Alaska. It's one of the ports of call that we had. 
and it is the the rain capital of the world, which it was raining when we went there, and it is, I believe, the salmon capital of the world. And uh, what was interesting, I was talking to the, they had two yarn shops in, in Ketchikan, which I thought was really interesting because there's not that many people live there. But they had two yarn shops, and one was a little bit further away, um, and they didn't really have a way for us to get there because we didn't really have a car, obviously. We just got off the ship for a short amount of time. So there was one that was actually walkable, the, and this is the one we went to. There was one that was a little bit further away. Maybe it was like an hour walking. So we just didn't have the time to do it. And it was raining. So we didn't really want to do it. So this was the one that was in like the downtown area. And it was called... Oh, she gave me a card. And now I don't know what I did with it. Let's see if I can find it. Ah, here it is. Fabulous Fiber Arts was the name of the shop. And she... The lady that we talked to was Robin. And she had actually just moved there a couple years ago, I think, from, I don't remember from where, but she wasn't a local Alaskan. Um, but it was a cute little store. They had a lot of commercial yarns there, a lot of hand-dyed yarns as well. I ended up buying this one, which is not normally in my wheelhouse at all, but since it was the salmon capital of the world, I felt I had to get salmon-colored yarn. <laughs> so uh, this is actually her hand dyed yarn. It's Robin's Nest Fiber Arts and Design. And it was, um, yeah, it has a little bit of Selena. Well, here's her, her tag. And it does have a little bit of Selena in it, as you see, some gold Selena. It's very sparkly. So I probably am going to use this for some socks as well. But yeah, I really thought this was really pretty. And so I ended up getting that. And then we went to Vancouver. That was our last stop before we went to Vancouver. And in Vancouver, we didn't really have a whole lot of time. Um, I didn't want to drag my family to yarn shop shops all over Vancouver. I think there's like five at least in Vancouver. So I had to pick one that was just the closest to our hotel, <laughs> which um, was this one. Three bags full. And um, very nice people. Um, they had a selection of Quince & Co., they had Sweet Georgia, um, which I believe is based in Vancouver. They had, what else did they have? They had a lot of kind of the rustic-y, um, a lot of the ones that are used for like rustic mittens and stuff like that. And I can't think of the names um, of them right now, but they had a lot of those. They had Noro. Um, Surprisingly, they didn't have a lot of independent dyers in that shop, other than Sweet Georgia, which is kind of a larger company now anyway. Um, but they didn't really have a whole lot of Canadian-based dyers, which I was a little bit disappointed in. Um, but the, the people who were in the store were really nice. Um, we were started talking, and they, we told them that we were out of town, so they actually gave me this bag for free, which I thought was really nice. Um, so they were really nice people. But then after the fact, I found out some other stores that had like Mud Punch, which I've been trying to get a hold of, and some other yarns. And I'm like, I was a little disappointed because this one didn't really have a whole lot of indie dyed yarns. But that's okay. I ended up buying something completely different. <laughs> this was kind of, um, I mean, yeah, there's just kind of a story behind this one, this purchase. So I wanted to buy some Canadian yarn. And although this is not necessarily from Vancouver. It was made in Canada. So this is a 50 gram skein of Koigu, I think is the name of the brand. Koigu. And I thought it was just really pretty. I'm probably gonna make this into socks as well. So this is Canadian based, not necessarily Vancouver based. I didn't really find anything Vancouver based that I liked. So I ended up going with a commercial, commercial yard. Stuff that you could get everywhere, but that's okay. Um, although Quince & Co., I don't think you could get everywhere where I live. Um, I've never seen it at a yarn shop. I could be completely wrong, but I, have, I don't remember seeing it at a yarn shop by me. So I ended up getting a sweaters quantity of Quince & Co. in their cotton base. This is the Bow Spirit colorway, and this is their... Um, guess it's Willet. 
because I really, the Quince & Co. Uh, linen that I have, I don't like working with it. I don't like the way it feels. So I'm hoping that the cotton's a little bit better. We'll see. Um, I had my eyes set on one particular pattern, but then when I worked out the numbers, this yarn was not going to work for that. So now I'm on the search for another summery pattern. And this is considered support weight. So now I have to look for a another pattern to be able to do this, something with this. And it's probably not going to be till next year because... As you know, I got plenty of projects on the needles, and I don't need a whole lot. And I don't, I don't need another garment for sure. Um, so yeah, I was a little disappointed in terms of my purchases in Canada. I was really hoping for a Canadian-based dyer, but the Sweet Georgia yarn—they were all they had in the store were tonals, which unless you have a specific project for, I'm not really sure what you could do with the tonal. I mean, you could make socks out of it, but they just weren't grabbing me so I just didn't buy Sweet Georgia um so yeah next time I think I'm, I'm gonna because we're definitely going to Vancouver again so I think next time we're gonna go to another shop and check out their selection but I really did like this color and um Quince & Co is not really easy to come by uh where I live anyway so I'm, I'm happy with this purchase I just wish I would have been able to buy and support um an independent dyer in Vancouver but it is what it is but yeah, so that is my Canadian slash Alaskan adventures in yarn. And um, that's all I have for this week for this podcast. It's been a lot. And I will be putting some footage in here of us, my family, um, things that I saw. Um, I'll try to do it chronologically if I remember when things happened. But I'll try to put it chronologically so you kind of see a progression of my trip. So enjoy, and I will see you next time.